Do that one. Thank you. Ed, this statement, you want this up front or at the end? Let's do it up front, just in case people are tuned in. Sounds like a plan. Good evening. Good evening. It's October 15th, 2020. This is a Council Rock School District Facilities Committee meeting. My name is Ed Salomon, School Board Director. Uh, let's go around the room to my left, starting with Mr. Block. Andy Block, School Board Director. Mary Ann McKee, School Board. Mike Thorward, School Board. Doug Taylor, Director of Operations. Robert Frazier, Superintendent. Ed Tate, School Board. Joe Hildago's just walked into the room, and I believe we have a school board director on the phone. Ms. Ms. Yep, Brooks. Denise Brooks on the line, school board, and, thank you. And Mrs. Marcel's coming in a little late. Before we start, uh, I just want to give the microphone over to Dr. Frazier. I uh, would like to make a couple points of interest to the community and to the board, obviously. Dr. Frazier. All right, thanks, Mr. Salomon. Much appreciated, and good evening to our CR community. Uh, as our community knows, last week we had asked all parents to complete a combination of a survey and registration form as the board uh, continues to contemplate transitioning to a five-day-a-week model uh, beginning next month. So just two quick updates on that here this evening. Uh, first is that we had a substantially low response rate uh given that part of this form involved actual registration information uh and that's unfortunate uh their response rate was uh sufficiently insufficient that the data really isn't meaningful or useful to us at this time and i'll share some of those response rates uh, the numbers with you here in just a moment uh the second piece before i get to that is that I want the community to know uh, that I intend to share an alternative recommendation for the second marking period to the board in the near future uh, where I will be seeking board feedback on that and then potentially presenting uh, this alternative recommendation and a related plan to go along with that recommendation one week from tonight at the October 22nd special board meeting. Uh, okay, so in terms of those response rates, here are those uh, details. We uh, started the process by sending out a total of 10,509 uh, unique links uh, to families. That's one link for every student in the district. And unfortunately for the first question, which was the one survey question, we, uh, we only had 7,275 responses. So that comes out to just about a 69 percent response rate, meaning that we were missing just about 31 percent uh, student responses, and that equates to uh, 3,234 students uh, for whom we were missing uh, that particular answer. Uh, the second question, we had 7,193 answers. Uh, that was the registration portion for the five-day-a-week model, and so that comes out to just about a 68 percent response rate, uh, meaning that we are missing just about 32 percent, which translates in this case to 3,316 students. Uh, and then for the fourth question, which was around uh, registration selection, if the hybrid model would continue, we had a total of 7,173 answers, again 68 percent response rate, missing 32 percent and specifically that breaks down to missing 3,336 student responses. So again, uh, given the registration component of that, um, it's unfortunate that we uh, at this point simply don't have the data that we need to make true meaning out of that survey registration form. Uh, and, and I'll close here again just by saying uh, to please keep in mind that I will be sharing an alternative recommendation to the board here in the near future, and uh, we will certainly be keeping the community informed on that. Thanks, Mr. Selman. Dr. Frazier, my pleasure. Dr. Thorwood? Dr. Frazier, one quick question. Can, I, sure. can you share the, what, sir, whatever data you have from the service with the board at some point? Uh, I can pull those. Yeah, sure. Just, just raw. Don't, don't clean them up. Thank you. Absolutely. Good. 
Any other questions from the board? All right. Mr. Taylor, you have a robust amount of good information this evening that you're going to go over regarding our facilities. Uh, a lot of it is, is uh, things that we need to talk about, we need to address. And Doug, the floor is yours. Thank you. And there is a lot of information, but I will go through uh, a lot of this quickly. And uh, it is all pretty much dedicated to the uh, 2020, 20, 25 uh, capital improvement plan so the book has been distributed to the, the board tonight um, you have that that is updated and current um, and I will review uh, the five-year plan and the proposed projects for the summer of 21 the budget and the schedule as well and a handful of board agenda items uh, one agenda item for the special meeting on the 22nd that pertains to the move of the rolling hills and LSAC programs because of the timing and the sensitivity of getting that approved. So I'll be on that one later. Uh, an overview of the plan. Every year I provide this update, so this is really more uh, for community than it is for you because I think you guys know this plan very well at this point. I will be quick about it. You know, what is the plan? It's basically a detailed description of the physical conditions within each school, and it rates and prioritizes each condition um, with heavily weighted uh, impact on safety, uh, educational impact and safety. So it is uh, a plan that does take, um, what's the word? Uh, I can't think of the word. But at any rate, it does establish a long-term, uh, a long-range capital plan by building for the district and uh, provides us with the ability to do long-range planning for our projects, which you're uh, familiar with back when we started working with the, the Newtown Middle School project, Holland Middle School project, and, and forward as recent as Rolling Hills. It provides an accurate and current conditions of facilities, which is important. Um, it, it is accurate, updated, and that helps with uh, minimizing the surprises that uh, other districts may see that don't have a plan as detailed as this. So we don't want to have those surprises, especially in the middle of winter where boilers shut down, you don't have a redundancy those kind of things. So anything that isn't redundant in HVAC systems, plumbing, electrical, is a higher priority than um, something that would have a backup system to it. How's it work? It evaluates and prioritizes capital needs of all the facilities based on certain criteria, uh, which I'll review. Um, how do we collect the information? I do a survey of all of the facilities. I also rely on our maintenance mechanics, principals, uh, and other staff for feedback. I collect that each uh, each year, all year, and we uh, include those items that that are warranted in this uh, updated plan. The capital improvements plan is based on some of the following items that are less than ten thousand dollars are generally not in the plan. Um, if they're uh, when aggregated over ten thousand dollars, we would might include those. For example, if there's one floor in a school that's bad uh, probably wouldn't be in the plan, but if a series of 10 classrooms all have the same challenge with the floor, then it would be in the plan. The capital improvement plan is based on, uh, again, some of these parameters. We do include the uh, environmental issues that we're aware of, such as uh, uh, asbestos-containing materials that we're aware of from our AHERA report. Uh, if we were aware of any lead, anything like that, we would include that in the plan. Um, the, uh, it is designed to reduce subjectivity, so um, any special interests are kind of eliminated from this. When we talk about what projects to do, we talk about them based upon uh, the weight of impact to safety, impact to education, and long-term planning. So it helps keep us on task as we evaluate these items. There's an introductory section which includes the executive summary which you'll find in your books. There's also a cover letter in your book which kind of summarizes the entire package. Uh, that is loose uh, on the inside leaf for you guys to, to look at. That also includes for you um, all of the buildings in the district and kind of a thumbnail look at when we need to think about renovations to all the buildings continuing forward. Uh, buildings that have been touched already when the next time it is. Not in my lifetime, but some of these will be revisit it down the road and we'll keep an accurate track of those as we go. The logic matrix, priority indexing, factors affecting priority ratings, 
general building information is all in the book. The matrix, as I said, is heavily weighted on safety and educational impact, also physical conditions, domino effect, economic impact, age, and the original life expectancy play into the calculation. In terms of scoring, anything five, six, seven, and eight should be looked at. Nines and tens generally don't show up in the book because they're an emergency kind of situation. I, you wouldn't wait until it's a nine or 10 to bring it to you. Now, there are some things that may drive a nine or a 10. If there's ADA issues or something that we want to move forward in the book, we may artificially inflate those or increase those ratings so that we push those to the top to get those items addressed. The logic matrix uh, may be tough to see, but this is uh, uh, what every item in the book is passed through. It's the filter for every item for every school. And they're all prioritized. Uh, I prioritize every item so that there's consistency uh, to the ratings. There's also uh, tabs 3 through 23, which includes the general building information for each building. Um, and the high schools include key plans for the athletic field. So when you see in the list of items recommended for um, capital repairs or improvements, the athletic fields are keyed into those plans. So you can reference those to identify what might be asked for in the book. Recommendations, again, priority by school and by priority. So we recommend there's a section that shows by school, and then there's another section that shows just by priority. So you can look at those two tabs and they can be sorted any way you wish. I can sort them in, in any fashion. Um, the increase is again 5% this year. I know we're in the middle of a global pandemic. Um, however, in looking at the reports and Turner uh, Construction has a very good uh, site and uh, information on building cost index. I've historically used their information. They're a nationally recognized company. Um, the second quarter uh, building cost is 1% lower than the first quarter from last from last year, but it remains or from the first quarter from this year, but it's uh, 28 points higher than it was this time last year. So the, the costs are still up. Um, we are seeing historically in talking to some of the uh, design professionals, a lot of districts are, are securing uh, monies because monies are are inexpensive to borrow right now and they're they're doing a lot of large projects in fact the cover letter that's in your book has a half a page of neighboring districts that are performing large projects or considering large projects at, at this time so um, the construction industry continues to perform at a significant level uh, some of that could be backlog but there's also uh, new projects that are actually coming out right now In the book also, there are uh, items that were included under respective schools that are, that are a large number. So when you look at the book from last year and what the total capital improvement project costs were compared to this year, there are some major increases, but, and you would say, well, how could that be? We just finished Rolling Hills. It should be 18 million less than it was last year. But for example, Welsh Elementary School has reached the 20 year milestone. So now that building shows up in the plan as, a, as all the built building components. They may not be prioritized as high priority, but they start to now show up as a growing uh, need for consideration. And in around 2025, you have to start thinking about planning that work for a year or two after it. So these are, uh, that's one of the, the big ticket items that shows up. Chancellor Center has some work that showed up in there. Uh, the HVAC systems in this building, uh, some residential type uh, grade, all of the condensing units around the outside of this building are getting tired. The interior work is getting tired. We're gonna have to think about a new system in this building, maybe five years from now, but we're gonna have to think about planning that. Holland Middle School, we kept the existing wood floors. When we renovated the building in the gym, they still have several years left. We've gotten several years out of them, so it was worth doing that, but we're gonna have to go into the gym and replace that floor down the road. The thing to think about in the gym is they have, uh, it's a wood flooring, so what should last 
nearly forever, but they have the tongue and groove system, right? So you can only sand that surface so many times before you approach the tongue and the groove of the wood, and it becomes so thin that the floor is challenged. And that floor has been sanded many times. It probably has another sanding or two left, and then we have to think about it. And you start to lose the light. You know, it's not live anymore, the floor. Uh, South has some, some work in it for uh, toilet room considerations. And uh, I think North had a little bit of mechanical work. So those are some of the bigger items that you'll see uh, through the book. Another big, this is the page to me that's really the meat of the book. It's the summary of facility project cost comparisons. And it's the page that compares total renovations to um, the capital improvements that are in the book. And it gives you a percentage to identify if you should consider renovations of the facility or just take on summer projects to kind of bring it back up uh, to uh, current standards. This page shows you uh, that chart. It's very difficult to see on this slide here on the screen. However, Hillcrest, Richboro, and Sol Finestone remain at zero uh, impact. So I'm showing that there is no impact to those buildings to our plan because they're all planned for renovation. We've taken them out of the book and we moved them to zero and I've held them at zero. If for some reason these three buildings are determined that they can't be renovated, uh, we'd have to think about putting them back in the book. But we can't just let them hang out it as if nothing is needed at the building. But I'm confident that these projects over the next couple of years will move forward. Um, Holland Middle School, I'm sorry, uh, Welsh Elementary School uh, and Newtown Elementary School are showing up as needs. Welsh was just added, so that shows a spike in that building. And as I said, around 25, we have to consider that. And Newtown Elementary School uh, needs to be considered for renovations likely within the next five years. So those are two that are more pressing on the list. And then there's a couple schedules in the uh, capital plan. Uh, there's a five-year improvement uh, schedule. This is difficult to see, but in the book, it's a pull-out 11 by 17. You can get a, a better understanding of how it works. I put another slide in here to try to help uh, just in a basic terms explain it. Rolling Hills uh, started in June of 19. It did wrap up October 1st of 20, as we projected. The building was beautiful. It's furnished with the new furniture, Sam Smith, the principal, starting to move some other things over. The teachers were literally moved when they walked into that building the other day. They were uh, very excited, uh, couldn't believe uh, their, new, their new digs. It's really an exciting building. You have to check it out when you can. Happy to try to plan some sort of visit when it's safe and works for everyone. Star Center uh, is under construction, and it is moving at a, a rapid pace. The concrete slab is in place. The structural steel is being erected. Um, we are moving. Uh, it's going well. Hillcrest Elementary School uh, and Richboro remain on track right now. They're on schedule. We continue to, to move those. And Sol Finestone, which was not bid last year, we have to consider when that will be bid. Um, the turf project and the tennis court project are in here because these were all the live projects before COVID uh, visited us, so we have to think about what we're doing with those long term. Tonight is not that discussion. We're going to come back November 12th from the joint meeting with Mr. Stone, and we can talk more about uh, PFM's findings and our recommendations once we uh, put that all together. The plan also includes uh, district-wide roof status reports, so it shows every roof in the district by area, so everything is labeled. Uh, we know exactly uh, how many square feet per roof section, what the roof is, when it was installed, who installed it, what's beneath the roof surface, um, and when we need to replace those roofs. So we have a good handle on all the roofs throughout the district, and I can tell you the three roofs that are key right now is Newtown Elementary School, Richboro Elementary School, and Hillcrest. There is a summary of completed projects. So every one of these summer projects that we do each year, I list those projects in the book, who did the work, what the costs were, and all the contact information. So years from now, if anyone needs to know who did the work, assuming they're still around, you can make the call, reach out to them, and, and uh, 
get the assistance that they may need. Miscellaneous building info is in here as well. So these are some of the major components within each school. And this information is here just as a, you know, at your fingertips, what boilers and what building, what year it was installed, what, what the stats are, you know, what the specs are on the information uh, equipment. It's very helpful. I did add a summary of the HVAC system serving classrooms. Because of COVID, some people ask what systems are in what schools. So if you go to that tab, you will see um, by school, what system is in each school. We started adding to the newer projects, uh, starting with Rolling Hills, uh, UV uh, filt filtration lighting in the coils of the HVAC system. Um, we're looking at some other alternatives. So you'll see in the book what buildings have those, what buildings have MERV filtration, um, which is a big thing now if you want to know if the filters are uh, able to, to filter out some of the the, the finer particles and viruses in the air. So we're, we're working to improve that with all the projects moving forward. And uh, you know, we'll have to consider what we can do to retrofit buildings that are already in place. So the projected five-year capital plan is the final tab, and this is the, the end result of what's in the book. So we look at the buildings, we figure out what needs are uh, high priority based on the matrix, based on current conditions or uh, whatever the factors may be. And then we put that plan together. So this section is uh, that plan. The plan is in your book. There are 11 by 17s that fold out in tab 31. Anything bolded in yellow is a, a plan project that was noted for the school year that wasn't uh, a deferred project, isn't necessarily a project that's warranty of a bond. This year I've added a blue tone. Any project that could be considered for a bond has been put uh, toned in blue. So I can work with Mr. Stone and we can determine the total value of the projects that are worthy of a bond if we wanted to go out and secure a bond. Um, projects that are sustainable, that are 25, 30 year projects that we would borrow money for. And then anything in red are projects that are uh, deferred from prior years or the prior year. This is not easy, uh, obviously, to see on the screen here tonight, but you'll see the yellow uh, arrow on the top for 2021. Those are the projects that are proposed for this coming summer. And then on the bottom, the horizontal green arrow shows the total project cost. And then there's a breakdown. There's the yellow that shows the construction cost. And then the red and blue are in the construction cost, but they're broken out to show what the deferred cost is and how much of those, uh, the value from those could be a bond, if we consider it, you know, a bond monies to do more work. And then those costs are uh, demonstrated for each year on the list, you can see here. And then the last year, the only thing I'd mentioned for 2025, as I said, I did put Hillcrest and Richboro Elementary School roof in the plan in the event that these projects were to not move forward for some unusual reason, we would have to put these these roofs out for bid and at least protect the buildings. We, you know, regardless of what's happening inside, we have to protect what's inside. Um, they were coded about 11 years ago with a 10-year coding project. That coding is basically deteriorated, so we're back to the original membrane roof that was on those buildings exposed to the elements. So we'll continue to work and patch and do what we have to do until we're ready to do something more, hopefully with part of the project. So the, the total project summary is listed here. It shows uh, for each year what the total estimated construction cost is from that chart you were looking at. It shows what the total soft costs are for each one of those projects and what the total estimated project cost is. And then to the far right, what is the amount of the deferred cost for each one of those projects? Um, so you're looking at about $37 million worth of work over the five years of which almost 15 million of it is deferred uh, project cost. How do we establish what should be our, you know, our budget for capital projects? There is the Association of Physical Plan Administrators who works closely with the uh, Depart U.S. Department of Education Institute of uh, Education Science. They work together to, uh, to develop school uh, criteria 
and they're saying two to four percent of the aggregate replacement value. If you look at their formula, they're around eight million to fifteen point six. Now this is an organization making recommendations for how much you should allocate for monies. I wouldn't go by anybody's top numbers from any organization without really tailoring it to our own district and our own area. So I take the formula and I cut it in half. Instead of two to four percent, I say, all right, it's reasonable to say one to two percent. Um, when you run the numbers at almost two million square feet of space for the district at $200 a square foot, at one to two percent, you're looking at roughly four million to eight million dollars that you should be putting toward summer projects for a district of our size based on what we have. And that should exclude the uh, professional fees and contingencies, but those I include in that number as well. So I'm saying four to eight million all in each year uh, should be considered, and I'm saying happy with the four. <laughs> Obviously, but I understand, uh, you know, we all are faced with economic challenges and, and uh, the pandemic and, and health and safety issues and everything else we've had to, to do and continue to do to keep our staff and kids safe here. So those costs are uh, certainly acknowledged. The, the budget does and should exclude non-renewal projects, uh, any kind of enhancements, master planning kind of stuff, uh, furniture, but uh, it should include uh, major maintenance items like paving restoration, sidewalk repairs, roof repairs, reconditioning, uh, any preventative maintenance kind of work. And it should be dynamic and updated annually to reflect the current conditions. We should always endeavor to uh, avoid deferred projects when we can. Uh, I think there's a lot of information out there that will show you for every dollar that you defer, it can cost you two to four dollars to do the work later. Uh, simply because of the ongoing deterioration of what it is to sometimes total replacement instead of repair and the domino effect to other elements when you don't affect, uh, address one item and what the impact would be to others. So this is just another a quick way to look at our numbers. Um, if you look at the total cost, you'd be looking at 7.5 million annually to address these over the next five years. Of, the, of that, the deferred work is $3 million a year annually. Um, if we were you know, to recognize that deferred work um, and, and address it for potentially through a bond, we'd be looking at that four, $4.5 million range to do our projects and stay on task throughout the district. So it just kind of shows that that number of $4 million is a real number when we, when we look at it. Um, and then, you know, there's a, about a bond would be in the range of 21.5 million when you exclude the two roofs for Hillcrest and Richboro, which I think could be addressed through a facilities improvement project. Again, all discussions for next month, but just showing some of those uh, numbers and that information. The key tonight, though, is for next summer. I did talk to Mr. Stone and four capital projects for next year. We're looking at about three three million two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars to address the needs for next year. So I'm hoping that, um, you know, I can put them on the agenda for November 5th, but with a potential uh, authorization to at least engage the design team to start doing some field studies, if there's, you know, uh, an acknowledgement that we could potentially consider that, uh, that cost. And we can talk about that at the end, but. And this is just a summary uh, to show we have about 14.9 million in backlog compared to 6.1 last year. The four to eight million uh, budget recommended, we have about three and a quarter. And you know, the consideration uh, for bonds. And that is one piece that um, Bill is working with PFM on as well to see if, uh, if that's something that could be considered and something to be discussed. <coughs> at least to discuss and you know, we can always say no, but it's worthy of looking at. And then lastly, this just shows the percentage of planned preventative maintenance versus deferred. So for the first year, 32% is planned. The other 68% is deferred. The second year is 10% planned, 8%, uh, you know, 59%, uh, and then 100, but that's just because we haven't continued down the road and the likelihood of deferring work by the fifth year. And that's the, that's the plan, that's a quick look at the numbers and where we are. I mean, generally we're in good shape. We don't have any buildings that are in 
in major disrepair. We've done a good job as a team taking care of our buildings. Um, you know, it's just uh, as, as we continue forward, I worry about some of the higher costing projects, a roof replacement project. If you say you have three million this year, that would be the project essentially, the roof and maybe something little. And the other stuff's gonna continue to, to back up. So uh, it's just a caution of us trying to get a hold of it before it gets out of control down the road. So these are the projects that uh, I would address as with that, uh, the monies, the 3.25 million that we talked about uh, a while ago. One would be the uh, school flasher project. We talked about this last year uh, before the pandemic hit and uh, it is something that we need to consider. It went around the entire district. They're all our responsibility to uh, maintain or replace uh, there are some that can be repaired. There are many that just need to be considered for replacement. Um, so it's about 22 units. It's a, you know, uh, the number is there. Um, the glazing replacement at South, there's a lot of window units at South where the uh, seal has failed in the windows. You can see even in this photo, a couple of windows and how they look uh, because the seal has failed over time. And there's some windows here at Chancellor at the atrium that would be included as part of the project as well. At South, we have the terrazzo floors. If the upper left picture may show at best. There are areas where the joints have delaminated and they're creating tripping hazards in the building. So the terrazzo has pulled away from the concrete substrate. It's a thin set terrazzo, epoxy adhered to concrete. And there are times where that system lifts up off of the the concrete. So in that bottom picture, you can see the metal zinc strip that they put in to pour the terrazzo to and then they grind it. That's a zinc strip that it popped up over top of. And you can't see it here, but it's all, you know, kind of cracked and, and beat up. So the terrazzo uh, contractor would come in, they'd take a saw cut across the hallway in a narrow width. They'd remove what's there. They'd put two expansion joints in at each side of the cut and then they would pour a new terrazzo and grind it to match the existing. And that's how they would repair what was there. They would address any joints that are in the concrete below so they wouldn't telegraph through and they'd put soft joints at those places. There's a mechanical project at North. There's a uh, heat exchanger um, as part of the HVAC system. And it's 18 years old. It's basically gasket replacement, just rebuilding, uh, not replacing. The uh, natatorium at South has some tired uh, starting blocks and uh, they need to be uh, replaced. They're basically a keep the anchored with four bolts and some of the bolts are stripped. Um, it, it really, uh, you know, you have kids climbing up on those and diving. We don't want to see over time one of those things letting loose. So before it gets too late, uh, the, the proposed would be a, a core and the, the post would actually slide into that core and it would be more secure than than the way they are. And the design has changed. Brian uh, Johnson, the aquatics director, said that they have a, a, a kick on the back and at the collegiate level and even postseason uh, playoff scenario swimming, uh, they use, um, you know, these type of blocks. So the kids really should get comfortable and used to these kind of blocks if they're going to advance to collegiate swimming after high school. But Primarily, not so much for that now, but just for the safety. Um, and at South, we keep talking about a study. We need to do a, uh, a study. We have an issue with the uh, drainage, and I think when that building was renovated, um, it didn't take necessarily into consideration the size of the internal stormwater piping that's in the block walls that enter, exits the building into storm. And when we get heavy storms and the water goes down the back ramp toward the loading dock, uh, this is a manhole in the grass where, where water has backed out of. We have put a bilge pump inside and we've done some things to try to correct it, but when we get heavy rains, the water literally in the system backs up to the second floor floor drains and we've had water cleanups like this. It's just not, uh, you know, not good. We don't really want to invite water in a building. I don't want to worry about environmental issues. We very quickly go in, we put dehumidifiers in, we dry things out, we do everything we have to do, but we really have to figure out why. And it, it could mean that we have to do something with storm drainage outside and maybe create a small basin in one of the areas where we can 
let water get out and collect and not back up into the building. So we just need to do some camera investigations. We may have to open a wall up in a place or two to see what's happening in a wall. Uh, so these costs would take care of that whole study, the report, and then we'd be able to establish a budget to address this long term. And then lastly is uh, uh, Chancellor Center. And you know, as time goes on, the, the water infiltration issue here is an, another issue. And, it's really the U-shape in the front of the building. I think you know we're committed to keeping this building. We are working on getting these windows uh, right uh, now. Um, we have replaced the roof. Uh, we've replaced the windows. Um, the building is you know a really nice historic building, but like every historic building in Newtown, it requires maintenance. Um, but this this issue, when they built buildings back in in the 1800s, they didn't worry about waterproofing foundation walls like they did today. They relied on big, thick, you know, uh, stone walls that really kept water out for the most part. Um, but as time goes on, the water is, is wicking through the, the mortar joints and, and the salts are coming through. This is the back stair. You can see some of the, the wall. And it's actually much worse when you look at it closely than it is in the pictures. But the paint is off and there's a lot of, you know, infiltration kind of issues. Um, so this is a project that would address some sort of foundation uh, remediation, drainage, perhaps, again, I budget based on a lot of unknowns, but based on you know what I believe we would want to consider when I talk to the engineers. And it may include a manhole type structure with a pump that pumps it up to the appropriate invert elevation so it can be pumped to storm water outside. It just doesn't get, the water doesn't get out. So it would go down, it would get in that system, it would be pumped up and then taken away. Uh, it also includes the area ways that are around the building. You know, we have these uh, doors down below in a couple areas. These walls are, uh, are not happy either. So uh, that's a project to consider here. And the total of all those projects, including, I always each year leave a little bit of money for unplanned projects because inevitably, as I'm working these, uh, we learn about some project that needs to be considered. And it's likely uh, Council Rock North uh, Administration, HVAC, we looked at that last year, we actually did it, and the numbers came in high, uh, un unusually high. Uh, there was only one or two bidders, and it was really, there was, it was uncomfortable, there was no way I could recommend uh, the project. So we may look at putting that back out and seeing if we can get better numbers this year. But these, these combined are about you know 3.1 million less than the three uh, three million two hundred fifty. So my hope is that we can at least, if possible, prior to the November meeting, if you say we have to wait to formally approve by a board the budget, um, get five people that agree that that number would be okay, so I can get Dewey involved in doing some field investigations as soon as we can, like while the weather is cooperative and we can start doing some physical probes and the things we need to do before it gets too late. Uh, so that would be my one uh, request for tonight. And then I would talk about the next steps. So the next steps are uh, tonight we talked about the plan. The budget approval would be November 5th at the latest. Um, November 12th, I come back with Mr. Stone and we'll talk about the facility improvement projects, the Hillcrest Richboro, so fine stone, turf, tennis, all those things, along with a much bigger picture that Bill will present. Uh, and then uh, December board meeting where we would have to actually make some decisions on that facility improvement stuff, the Hillcrest, Richboro, so fine stone uh, type projects. We need to really get some direction in December in order for us to, to get things out to bid and get numbers and all those kind of things. We would commence with the capital projects no later than November 6th, uh, if we have to wait till the 5th. The investigation design and all the uh, bidding would happen through January for facilities, for the uh, facility improvement projects, or capital improvement projects, rather. And then we would look for board approval somewhere around February uh, for those, so we can get a contractor lined up, have the more materials, and that's why we're successful. We get things out early, we get good competition because the first projects on the street are the projects that people go after because they want to get stuff locked up and then they'll go after other projects. So there's an advantage to, to beating other districts 
uh, and getting things out to bid before they do. So that concludes the, the, the capital improvement piece of this uh, tonight. The only other things I have on the agenda are the uh, board agenda items. So there is a uh, Council Rock North and South softball field improvements. It was a Title IX project, some hitting cages, some pitching lanes. Um, I don't know if you've got a chance had to see them, but they turned out really nice. Yeah, that's right. And we have them at North and South. So now the, the, the girls and boys both have very similar uh, facilities uh, to, to do their, their thing. So they're really nice. They worked out well. Uh, the project did start at 157. We value engineered that in the, in the beginning. Uh, we saved about $28,000. So we reduced the cost of the project to 129. And we have some allowance money coming back. So this cost is a $13,200 credit for the, the project allowance that we had in the contract. The um, sole fine stone environmental abate, abatement, uh, that was a piece that we needed to do in advance of the uh, project that we planned there. Uh, regardless of the project last year, we still wanted to get this asbestos out from above ceilings that we identified during our investigations. It wasn't a danger to, to anyone, but I didn't want to leave it there any longer than we needed to. Uh, so we took advantage of the time and took that out in advance of the project. There is an allowance that we had in the project that was untouched of $21,550. So that is a credit back to the project to us. The hardware project that we did for uh, the district two years ago for uh, intrusion concerns, we had a lot of schools that didn't have the hardware that the newer schools had. So we retrofitted buildings. Uh, to include that hardware. We uh, completed that project and uh, submitted final billing and there's an allowance uh, credit of $17,470. We did at the beginning of the project increase the cost by $56,000 because we decided since Richboro Middle would be used as a swing school long term, it made sense to, to get intrusion hardware in that building for the years of life that it had left to serve students. So, while we did increase it by that, we credited back 17.4, so that's good news as well. Uh, then the budget for the capital projects uh, will be formally uh, on this uh, board agenda. And there are soft costs for the Star Center. We're beginning to order some of the furniture, fixture, equipment, some of the soft cost items that are needed for that project. The first would be the the cameras, we had a meeting the other day with Access Security, uh, with, with Bill Rick and team, with Chuck Lambert and his team, and we discussed uh, the layouts, made sure everything was covered. Um, there's about 27 cameras as part of the project. We did, we were able to actually reduce uh, some of the cameras that were planned. So we had 27, 18 interior, there's one fisheye interior, and eight exterior as well, and it's the installation, commissioning, the programming, and the software. So that is part of the project. And for the 22nd, for next week, this is the last item I have for board agenda items, the um, moving bids for uh, moving LSAC over to Richboro Middle School and moving Richboro Middle back to Rolling Hills. Uh, if you recall, in February we were going to award this and then the COVID came and we could not finish our project in July, so we rejected those bids. We've rebid it. I talked to Rob Cox because I was concerned about the number of contractors that may be interested now that may or may not have the qualifications we need to ensure that we get this move taken care of in three days. We had three reputable bidders at the time we put this out to bid. We agreed that we could go out to those three with an RFP and ask them for a number again. They were aware of the project. They knew it well. They were competitive. They were all within a couple thousand of each other back when we did it. So we put it back out to just that group to assure that we had somebody coming in here that could really take care of business. They all worked with us in the past. And Hughes relocation uh, was the low bid. Uh, one of the three dropped. He didn't submit a bid on bid day. Um, so we got two bids. But the bid is about $6,000 less than the bid, the low bid was back in February. So we actually saved a little money and we have a good contractor 
and they are going to, to move this building in three days, uh, both buildings in three days. And that includes taking it, moving it to the new building, and uh, moving the, the boxes into the respective spaces. So it's a, a lot of work. We'll have about a crew of 25 here uh, working hard for three solid days. And uh, that, this is a project where uh, I discussed early on, I had some concern for, for the furniture, fixture, and equipment budget. If you recall, we changed technologies prior to this project. We were going to go with smart boards, and we went with inter uh, interactive uh, boards, LED, um, because the technology changed and the budget wasn't based on that technology. We had a uh, COVID health and safety plan that we were you know, required to uh, implement on this project. Um, all that being said, we have exhausted the furniture, fixture, and equipment budget on the project. We do have a project contingency of 356000 These monies will all fall within that contingency. We'll still have some contingency left. And after looking at uh, all of the costs today with Dewey Engineering, I talked to Colin, um, we still have to finalize all the final change orders, but we took some uh, credits at the beginning, some value engineering. We're going to be under under the budget when this is all said and done, uh, under the total project budget. So there is no concern about exceeding the Rolling Hills budget. We will, again, be under budget when we finish this project, even with those changes. And we added Terrazzo back to the project, if you recall, as a change order. We uh, added the mill and overlay of the parking lot back. Uh, we had that discussion uh, last year, and we felt it was worthy to put those sustainable floors in the school and to address the parking. So all said and done, we're going to be in good shape, including the moving costs for Rolling Hills. And then lastly, uh, upcoming meetings. Um, the 22nd of October is just the moving uh, piece for me. I know the meeting is much bigger than that uh, for other reasons. Um, the 5th of November is the next board meeting where I'll bring the capital uh, improvement budget. 9 November, I have a uh, Zoom meeting uh, for Hillcrest and Richburg for zoning. The 12th of November, we have the joint meeting and we'll talk about the projects we discussed earlier. The 18th of November, I'm back in a meeting with the Board of Supervisors for Hillcrest and Richboro with uh, Northampton Township. And then the 3rd of uh, December, uh, we'll be back to the Board for the Facility Improvement Projects, which we'll talk more about in November. And that is all I have for tonight. <laughs> a lot of good stuff. Uh, any questions from the board? Yeah, one quick for, for Doug. Sure. Um, your summer projects are two thirds this building coming up here this year. I mean, two million of, of the three million is this building. Um, as you pointed out, it's an old building. Um, I'm not convinced myself that we're, we're doing the right thing by pouring money in this. Um, that's fine. Uh, can you, not tonight, but and, and tell me if this is too much work, tell me how much money we've poured into this building in, say, the last decade? I can um, certainly you know, yeah, just, do just, my best, yeah. Huh? Yeah, I'll definitely do my best to find everything I can. Yeah. Well, I, I, and that, and that, Doug, that's what I, I don't want to turn this into a, a giant project with anybody, but it'd be nice to know how much, what, what's the, you know, the decade draw on, 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 on maintaining a historic building for a school district. That, that, that's really... Yeah. The, the number, and it can be approximate, as long as you put approximate in front of them, I, I, don't, I don't want you to go crazy on this. So. Yeah, I mean, I, and I understand, that, you know, it's also served us 200 years. Right? Yeah, yeah, so that, that, that's all. <laughs> it's, it's certainly given us a lot of time. <laughs> so. <laughs> Lasts longer than a vet. Uh, Mrs. McKay. Thank you. Um, my question also is regarding Chancellor, and Doug, forgive me if I've asked you about this before. This building is within uh, Newtown's Historic District, I believe it's the National Register of Historic Places. So I would imagine that we might be finding what could happen to this building as it sits within this protected district. And as I said, I may have asked this before, but would there be any monies available to us for these projects from uh, National Preservation Trust or any kind of federal grant money for historic preservation of a building such as this? It's a good question. I would have to, you know, certainly investigate that and see. And I would do that, for sure. Thank you. Mr. Block? That, that's a great question. Um, 
and I was going to ask that. Of, of, of late, I've become quite the expert on uh, city, state, and federal grants and grant writing. And uh, in addition to the preservation pieces, are there just development? I mean, a lot of stuff for for, for, for for businesses and business retention, but there are nonprofit things out there. I don't know if that applies to a public entity, but you know, whether it's the, the state website or um, or the federal websites, maybe something for uh, Ms. O'Grady. Do there's there's actually there's a ton of money that's out there, um, and it's a big piece of what you know our, our, our state representatives and, and congressional delegates and senators you know secure for us you know their pet projects. So you know maybe there's also a way to reach out to their offices as opposed to us doing the work as well. You know they're they're, they're folks that typically do that. Maybe Wendy's staff or Steve's something like that. Um, it, it, this is always great every year. It always is amazing to me. I can't believe we're version number nine already. The eighth. Um, for me, it's it's just a testament to how on top of everything that we are. And prior to this book starting, um, you know, there's money spent kind of uh, all, all over the place. And, and now it's when you when you have a capital budget in a district like this, it's really nice to know where every single dime is spent. It's a testament to you know this administration and and, and the one prior as to, to what they've done. So so Doug, hats off to you. Are you aware if any of your peers do this around the, the uh, around Bucks County? Not, not to this level. Um, uh, I know I haven't seen a lot of their plans per se, uh, but I, you know, talking to them, uh, not a lot to this level. Uh, in my old life, I used to provide this service to districts, yeah. so I, uh, I know in the Lehigh Valley area where I used to be housed out up there. There are districts there uh, that did through the services I provided with, you know, with my own employer. But now I bring it to my own, on my own. Um, um, so I'm not sure. Uh, maybe one or two that I'm aware of. Not, certainly not now with everything you guys have going on, but maybe something that uh, uh, Dr. Hoffman might want to share with the folks he supports just as a best practice. Uh, you know, get a little recognition for the work Doug does and the work that you guys do. But good stuff, man. Thank you. Yep. So, Dago? Hey, Doug, thank you so much. You know, every year it becomes easier to follow. So I think this is my third year looking at this. And, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate the detail. And if you're the only one doing this around here, then that's great. You're an asset to the, uh, to the, to the school district and the community for it, um, organizing and, and being able to make it easy for us to see the scope that we have to uh, look at for the future. Um, the only thing I would say is, you know, I trust you in the needs of the things that you're picking for this year. Uh, there's like the, there's a big jump next year, I guess, because of the, uh, the delayed projects perhaps um, that we have that we want to get done. But um, so the only thing I say, like in the need for the draining, drainage versus the cell phone enhancements, they're relatively the same price. And that could be something you could probably easily flip if, if you thought training is more important. That's why you probably put it up ahead. But that would be something for the board to consider. Those cell phone enhancements to the school are probably pretty critical for, for, from a learning standpoint. That would be one thing I might uh, mm -hmm. you know, suggest we contemplate. Um, but I'm all for taking your, you know, if we end up just doing whatever you got to do, that's fine. But I would say, hey, those cell phone things are very important. Uh, and to get that signal stronger in the schools. So that's one comment I would have. Then the other thing I'd ask was, we, we, we zeroed out the, the three projects that we're doing, the two elementary, I'm sorry, the three elementary schools, Soulfinestone, Richboro, and Hillcrest elementary schools. Um, but the roof projects still stay in the chart. It's not separate. When we renovate, those will be right. gone. So, but you're so keeping it in there. The roof costs are included in the total in the project cost that we projected for those two projects. And as I said, I threw them into the fifth year, so they weren't in the mix of everything else. I threw them out kind of on their own in the fifth year. In the event that those two projects were, for whatever reason, not happen, I want to make sure that we recognize they have to happen. I remember you saying that, but then yeah. I didn't line it up with the charts. And, so. and your point is Goodbye. your point is very good on the on the block uh, or on the uh, phone. Uh, work I am waiting we've been trying to get right before uh, the pandemic we had the representative ready to come out and survey the district and we had to put the brakes on it and I tried to get him back now and he's at least a month away 
from coming back to do a detailed uh, evaluation of the district so we can get a, a true budget on what that project cost is. So um, that's why I was a little bit, you know, uh, shy of getting that one, you know, out here because I don't know. If he comes in and says it's two million, not a million, and then I tell you it's planned, but now it's not, you know, I'm a little worried. So well, we that can definitely, might be, you know, sorry. revisit that. Yeah, that might be worth a pause to do that because I think it's more important. I mean, unless the draining is an issue, a real big issue for the structure of the building this year, they're both relatively growing at the same uh, rate of cost. And I like 5% better than 6% uh, projected uh, increase. That's all I have. Thanks. Uh, Mrs. Brooks on the phone, anything to add or question? Um, I don't. I don't have any questions at this time, but I just wanted to express incredible gratitude for the enormous amount of work that goes into this. Um, it's very appreciated when we have tools like this, so that our decisions are based on, um, you know, data points that are objective and that we can, you know, really evaluate things uh, in a reasonable way. And um, I had spoken to Doug earlier this week, and I, it's worth noting that um, I, I'm not somebody who generally likes paper. I don't print things out. I like electronic files. I have a lot of things stored on drives and things. But this one book is something that I touch and reference so much, so it really speaks to the value that this brings um, and how important this is. So I know it's a huge amount of work, Doug, and I just want to thank you and a special appreciation for having it shipped to me in time for this meeting. Mr. Tate. Thank you, Mrs. Brooks. Mr. Taylor, you know that I'm very sensitive to the cost of deferred maintenance. And, you know, going way back to my days at the University of Illinois Chicago. But um, as far as using bond money for maintenance, um, those kinds of capital projects for renovation, is there a difference in cost? Can the same bond sources be used for major projects for smaller projects? I, I'd have to defer to Bill Stone on that. I couldn't, be, I couldn't answer that. I think that it is the same. Have we done that before? Uh, I personally haven't. I've always worked with the business administrator in terms of the borrowing. Yeah, I sure. mean, I, sure. I can tell you that Bob Reinhardt and I, at, back in my days when I was in a different hat, working at Penridge, and he was in a different hat at Penridge, and here uh, he did borrow some monies, I believe, as well. So I, I don't think that that's an issue, but I would defer to Mr. Stone. Sure, of course, yeah. Okay. Yeah, with, with where rates are right now, it's at least a conversation, where oh, typically I, it's not even something we want to take I, a look at. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm very sensitive to the fact that when you defer maintenance, you're just um, putting off work you eventually need to do, and you're increasing the eventual cost and all the other things that go with it. Um, and one other question. Um, in terms of the athletic facilities for north and south, when this planning is done, do the athletic directors from the two high schools consult with each other? I mean, it, 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 we don't share facilities very often. We do, of course, with the stadium. But I just wondered if there is a consultation. There is. So whenever I work on uh, anything at Walt Snyder Stadium, I involve uh, Mr. Leyer over at South because they do share the field. Anything that's shared, I, I try to incorporate, you know, uh, discussions with the whole team. So I work with Mr. Finlay and, and Leyer together. Um, and when I prepare the, the site plans of all of their fields, I share that with both and we work together to make sure that it was a consistent kind of overall site plan for both, both sites. Yeah, that makes sense, especially given title time. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. So I, I kind of distinctly remember the conversation with Mr. Stone about borrowing for things, and and it, it actually triggered me to, for my own personal uh, information, uh, I think his stance is, if it makes sense with the way the money is now, he would definitely look at it, whereas years of the past, he'd probably shake his head no. So the fact that Doug and Bill are, are having that conversation to me is, is that's a big win for the district yeah. and the infrastructure of these buildings are, are important to our kids now more than ever yeah. that we have things properly working and maintained. Yeah. So I, I'm I, very yeah, this I mean Doug and I talk. Uh, you know we go through this um, Q and A session ourselves and 
There's, there's not a time I don't talk to Mr. Taylor that I'm not impressed with what he has planned, how it's going. Um, and the ironic thing is how he saves money. Uh, it's almost very consistent. Um, I don't know, good, good job, Doug. I mean, really, really, really good job. Um, so I think you need five nods to, to move ahead with um, some of the things we talked about. So um, anybody have a problem with any of the things he's asking for? Good. We got it, Doug. So I just uh, thank you for that. And, and just I just want to go back. I just want to say that my peers throughout the other districts are very good and very strong. And I don't want to toot my own horn, but I, you know, I just have some skill sets that some of the guys may not have. I, I worked for an architectural firm for 19 years, and I, and I worked, you know, construction management for, you know, about 10 with schools. It's all been school world stuff. Hey, listen, we get beat up for a lot of what we do. We can be <laughs> proud of what we do, too. It's okay. Be humble. Just, yeah, some take advantage of the white cap. You're they, good. They just can't do, you know, they don't have that. So no, or, no. That, share, 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 share what you're good yeah, at. I just want to be clear. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate no, it. Thank you. Any other board comment about this evening or anything? No, no, no. I look forward to seeing Dr. Frazier's ideas. Dr. Frazier, anything else? Nada. Doug, one hour. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. That's the end of the meeting. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. You can stay three more hours.